Hi, this is Rayo Agra Everly, and I'm attempting to give you a 15-minute version of what the current school is crisis looks like for me. I call it a crisis because parents are going crazy right now and just trying to deal with the new school environment. Okay, so what you have is this: is that the new school environment includes um, the old model. Schools were supported, teachers were supported. <laughs> um. The teachers would have aids, teacher and teaching aids in, in the classroom. The teachers would have push-in services for special ed and other um, types of um, uh, special populations. So teachers had support, aids and other things in the classroom. Now, and students would, um, uh, the pullouts would communicate with teachers, which is not going on right now. So teachers and pullouts are not communicating right now. And teachers... And so that means that the student doesn't have the aids, doesn't have to push in, and very seldomly has this pull out because pull outs tend to disappear. Um, curriculum assistance people don't, because they're not communicating now the way they used to with teachers, they have no clue what the student is at, where he's at. So um, that's a big problem. That was the old model. All right. <coughs> and a new model in a little bit. New model again is that. The teachers all alone. Uh, teacher um, is supposed to provide push-in services, um, but cannot. Um, the teacher is not licensed. The teacher doesn't have all those qualifications in special ed and doesn't know what the what's expected. I don't know what your curriculum standards are. I don't know what state standard is. I don't know what federal standards are. What the kids have to meet, but you expect me to be on equal footing, which cannot happen. Cannot. Um, there's no classroom access by by parents. Um, <laughs> we don't have access to Google Classroom. None of that stuff. Um, good power school in some schools is totally eliminated, um, especially when they're middle school in particular. Um, and so, um, and again, students are caught without any pull-out services. Aside from, uh, so the teacher is supposed to be the pull-in, pull-out at times. And you can't teach and do uh, all this for special needs students or whatever. And not only that, if a student is lacking counselors and is lacking, has behavior issues or whatever, that teacher cannot do all that during one classroom session. So when you have the teacher by themselves in the new model, you're having problems. All right, student experience is this. Uh, you know, students, um, <laughs> I cannot believe how much less classrooms are going on right now. Because if a teacher is out, there is no sub. The class is canceled. Period. Done. Over. Okay. And then parents are all those school resources. So parents become all the school resources for the student. That's impossible. Okay. You're expecting me to be in the house, first of all, number one. Um, um, and that's uh, saying, hey, look, parent doesn't have appointments themselves. Um, second, the second of all is this, is that... <coughs> Parents are not licensed to provide all those teaching resources. I mean, we we don't have a, a, a certificate in, in early education or anything like that. So you expect me to do all that. Um, not only that, the biggest, craziest thing is this. Is that as a parent, I'm supposed to leave the students home alone on a regular basis to go get them lunch and breakfast from the school pickup. Really? Really, guys? Did you think about that? Did you think about that, that a parent is leaving the home with minor children to go pick up lunch? Uh, so the student experience is horrible because less classes and you're trying to use parents as resources. And, you know, you're expecting that relationship to be good all together. Um, so let's see. Let's continue. Then you have uh, power school. Parent doesn't have access to the power school. Parent doesn't have access to Google Classroom. A no logging monitoring, and so the parent becomes again certified computer technician, the lunch pickup person, the tutor. All right, and parents are expected to leave children at home, cook lunch. I cook lunch on a regular. I'll get up early in the morning and cook their lunch so that they're not complaining that they don't have nothing to eat, and when they have their break, they have something to eat, and then, and then where they're supposed to be the meltdown professionals for these kids when they're frustrated. My kids get so frustrated with these technical issues 
from WCPSS and, and the thing. Remember here, in this household, this parent had to purchase over $300 worth of equipment. New computers, new routers, new stuff to deal with WCPSS. And that's just not acceptable. Now, you know, this is pretty much the economics of this new model is interesting because during the time when um, people are going out of work for COVID, you have teachers only, okay, no more push-in, no more pull-out special ed, no more extended day teachers. For example, if, if, a, if a child in special ed or any other um, um, regular ed student needs tutoring or whatever, there's no more ext extended day teachers, okay? That doesn't exist. I mean, there's no tutors exact, exactly. No more substitutes. And, and, and uh, extending school year <coughs> on teachers is interesting because um, one student was offered extended school year this year, but the teacher, um, the person who was supposed to teach that extended school year said that they would only be available 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes per day. And then the student was expected to do everything else on their own. So you're getting uh, an extended day full teacher being paid fully for a day, and they're only there a quarter of the time. So the economics is this. A lot of people are unemployed right now. The push-ins, the, the, all the resources that teachers tend to have, tend to have are gone. And so you have teachers that are stressed out. Okay, so then and you have students that are stressed out. I mean, you figure a student who needs to who needed to be there early and stay before school and after school to have extra services to bridge the gap, um, they don't have that opportunity. They don't have extended school year as opposed to the yummy, when someone just hands on teaching them something. Um, it's just the economics is hard because a lot of people are unemployed and because the school system will not have Google Classrooms where in there, right next to the teacher is a, um, a, um, a what do you call it? A, um, the push-in services or the teacher aides are not right there appearing in the classroom right next to the teacher. You have none of these classrooms appearing in that matter. Um, the new WCPS model is parent as all special ed student resource and god forbid if you have a developmentally delayed student oh my god so they expected to work a lot of them are expected to work from home with a dd child in their home or mr child in their home they just can't do it okay these school systems are not making the, the uh, well wcps in particular so the parent will is is all special ed re re education resources is the counselor, is the meal provider, is the computer tech, and is the teacher. All right, because they're expecting us to teach the lessons and do the lessons and do the homework with these kids. We can't do all this <coughs> by ourselves. Sorry. Your model is not working, all right? Um, and you're expecting us to be in that capacity and that certification training, but you're not. So what happens is, Parents are losing their hairs. Teachers have no support. And teacher support personnel are out of jobs. Period. Parents losing their hair. Teachers, no support. And support personnel out of jobs. They're gone. So, is this working? Here. This is what's happening. We are getting nothing. Students are getting, not getting anything that they need. Teachers are not getting what they need. And support personnel is not getting what they need. Everybody out of work. And these new models are not working. And not in WCPSS anyway. Especially at Wingham Middle School. Just trying to give you two cents in terms of what the new education environment is like. Hope that helps. So this is it. Um... When you're talking about online learning, you got to discuss your experience. My experience hasn't been great, and not of my children necessarily, not all of them. Um, what you have is um, March, COVID came, and schools went to online learning. Fine. 
Okay, but people are people. Children are children. And some children are hands-on. They need to learn only so the best with hands-on, uh, one-on-one type contact. Versus you have the other learners who are more of versatile. They can do online. They can do blended. And they um, can thrive in different environments. But you do have those solely, solely um, one-on-one -on -one type people. Unfortunately, um, you have county systems like Wake County Public School System who just bags everybody together and absolutely um, tries to get them all to do online. Now, this is aside from other populations, like special ed populations. You have special ed publication ed, I like development is delayed, um, mental retard people, and they need a lot of intensive work, and parents can't do it. So you can't have them homeschooled, quote-unquote. A DD um, child cannot be homeschooled. A DD child can only be done in a classroom environment um, most times. Um, then you have other populations like ADD and ADHD which you have special schools often, like Fletcher School and so forth. But also, once again, those things, those type of populations often need one-on-one -on -one handling um, in terms of like one-on-one -on -one work, um, someone to go alongside of them to help them learn and obtain materials because they have the capacity to learn, but they need more of the one-on-one -on -one reinforcement and one-on-one -on -one hands on approach. So, uh, this online experience was a disaster for one child and a success for another. And this is the dilemma that's faced. Now, this is an interesting concept here. Um, the school system hasn't developed. Uh, it's gone from um, teachers with a whole bunch of supports to teachers with no supports. And for, but for students, that means that you go from having tutors and extra resources in the classroom and so forth to having nothing. Now, they haven't, the Wake County Public School System in particular, from what I've seen, haven't developed like pools, pools of teacher assistants, pools of special ed or um, support personnel for special populations. Um, wherein um, pools of tutors um, and uh, pools of hours of teachers available after um, school for teaching, uh, for tutoring. So you don't have all those things. So for example, if a school, if a teacher is in class right now and online or whatever, and let's say you have a couple of TAs, a pool of TAs from various schools, not just one, you can have a whole network of TAs from various schools, teacher assistants from various schools in a pool, ready. So if a student has a question, they don't have to interrupt a lesson's plan or, uh, or they can support their questions by asking the TAs. Uh, same thing with special ed. Stuff like that that hasn't been happening. It's just crazy. It's just... Um, and then people, and you uh, eliminate all those positions, TAs, uh, special population, special ed, whatever, all those uh, additional support, curriculum assistance, um, and you eliminate that, and then you don't even have instruction. And I'm talking about the Wake County public school system uh, experience in particular. A teacher is out. There's no subs or pool of subs to take over that class. I just don't understand it. Please explain it to me. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.